It's a very special episode of Yuzuru Hanyu is my emergency contact, the Fan You Fan Me podcast, because today is our emergency contact's birthday. Oh, Tanjobi Omedato gozaimasu, Yuzu! Fan Yus around the world are celebrating and have been since the clock struck midnight on December the 1st, welcoming in Yuzu's birthday month. And let's be honest. We really don't ever stop celebrating the fact that Yuzu was born. Regardless of time, day, or month, every day is a party because Yuzu exists. This episode will welcome the newest addition to the Fan You Fan Me podcast, Ask Fan You Fan Me, where I'll answer the questions you submitted. That segment will round out the episode, but first... Will let me entertain you kick things off with a blog post from 2018 about what we all wish was possible for Yuzu's birthday, for him to be with us, even if we don't know it when he is. Se no. Which fan you is he? I'm not sure the fan yous are going to make it. What are 20,000 plus of us to do when we are two weeks into Yuzuru Hanyu radio silence and still have over six weeks to go before he officially resurfaces? I can tell you in two words. Fabricate. Suspicion. That's right. When you have no better option, fantasize. And yes, that could be the title of this podcast. What are they suspicious of? Infiltration, and not just from anyone, from Yuzu. The fan yous are rallying around something other than Yuzu's how is that even possible, I'm telling you he's animated, well-fitted, under-armor training outfit. They have concluded the one thing that could set the entire group ablaze. Blaze! Yuzu is among us. Now don't get me wrong. There's always been a handful of people who like to toss this conspiracy theory around. But it was less the general fan you populace, and more like the random dude in his basement posting, The moon landings were fake! while he downs a canister of cheese puffs. Occasionally, someone will post, What if Yuzu is on here? Har har har. A few people will respond with laughing emoji faces, or the random person who will post the gasp face. Psh, newbie. And then we'll go back to playing Caption This, with a picture of Yuzu clinging to Pusan with a horrified look on his face. The horrified look is on Yuzu's face. Pusan stays pretty chill. But the fantasizing is spreading. Even the Yuzu montages to lame American pop songs have somewhat subsided. Somewhat. I mean, the guy in the basement has to have something to do when not slandering NASA. This infiltration notion is only reinforced by the fact that apparently Yuzu's mind is a still trap. He's been on countless TV shows where he has made an offhand remark about how he watches the show, or at least saw it when they were talking about him. Almost every time, the host looks agog and stutters, You saw? Well, yeah! You were roasting him on Japanese television. What did you think? I feel the same way when it comes to some of us fan news. Some are starting to get really, really worked up over comments Yuzu has made which allude to his awareness of current Yuzu events, which they, for some reason, think he should be completely oblivious to. They have seen pictures of him with an iPhone, right? I mean, it's one of our favorites. They know he lives in the same dimension as us, right? I know that one's hard to believe. They do realize he is the Yuzu in the current Yuzu events, right? Shortly after the Sendai Victory Parade, a contest started on Twitter for the worst photo from the parade, or officially, and more aptly named, the shittily taken photos of Hanyu Yuzuru competition. Like most Yuzu contests, the prize was touted as self-satisfaction, bragging rights, Momentary viral fame, or my favorite prize due to its honesty, nothing. Almost 120,000 people lined the streets of Sendai to try to catch a glimpse of Yuzu on top of a truck. Yeah, a truck. It gave me anxiety. You can imagine the quality of some of those photos. 
Hence, the brilliant idea to reward, reward with nothing, the worst photo. The best part about this contest was one of its alternate titles. If I get Yuzu's face in the picture, I lose. Twitter was filled with photos of the back of Yuzu's head, his leg from the knee down, a lone hand reaching longingly towards some trees. Winnie, are you in the forest? Can you get me off this truck? Or, my pick for creativity, the blurry photo of a street lamp and a tree. No Yuzu whatsoever. The caption? Yuzu's aura. But my point is not the contest. My point is that there was an interview where a reporter handed Yuzu an iPad, showing him photos and referencing the contest. When he replied something to the effect of, oh, I knew about this, the fan Yuz lost their shite. He knows about the contest! OMG! Dying! Well, yeah! What do you think? He goes home and sticks his head in a bucket of sand. There's no way his hair would look that good if he did. Pantene isn't a miracle worker, and sand is forever. Even this could have been forgotten with another truly effective caption this game, or a photo of Yuzu's face created by a fanu out of rainbow Twizzlers to distract everyone. But then it happened. The gif that broke the Yuzuru Hanyu International fan group. It shows Yuzu smiling his usual polite, endearing smile that causes a spike in the Japanese economy and cherry blossoms to bloom, both real and animated. As he states, it's really amazing that fans can notice and observe all these details. Big deal, right? But then, he shifts his eyes to look dead into the camera, and, smiling an unapologetic smile, dripping in hidden meaning says the five words that stopped 20,000-plus hearts. I look at you, too. Five words. Five short, basic words. But Yuzu might as well have thrown a grenade into the middle of the fan use. Better yet, a quad axle. Best part? He knows exactly what he's doing. So now that an ironclad, irreversible conclusion has been drawn based on a fan-created and translated gif, the real fun begins. Which fan you is he? The one posting the obscure ad pictures? That would explain how they were found in the first place. The one making the creepy Yuzu stuffed dolls? And this comes from someone with a unique situation, but they give Sweetheart the heebie-jeebies. The one weeping about how beautiful Yuzu's Japanese is? It's too beautiful. I can't stop crying while I translate it. My keyboard is covered in tears. Maybe he's the one making the montages to Adam look nah. Or maybe it's me. That joke is funnier when you just read it. I'd like to think he's the admin who has been driven to one-word smackdowns of lame posts. I imagine him sitting on his couch scrolling through Facebook on his laptop while he eats McDonald's french fries. Because for some reason, I crack up if I think of Yuzu eating McDonald's. In fact, I was at work the first time I had that thought. I couldn't stop laughing. I kept waiting for someone to ask what was funny so I could answer, I was just thinking about my Japanese figure skater boyfriend eating McDonald's. But back to Yuzu on the couch. There's a happy thought. He stops on a post about a new kawaii video and types with one gusto-filled finger, O-L-D, and then pops another french fry. Oh, and he's also wearing his glasses in this imaginary scenario, because, well, why wouldn't you put his glasses on him in an imaginary scenario? Anyway, back to Yuzu's awareness of Yuzu events. Lest this imaginary scenario makes its way to two sleeping bags and microwaved hot chocolate. If you had magazines and TV shows and websites dedicated to you, wouldn't you check in on them? I mean, even Arima likes to read his own manga now and then, as long as we skip some of the more traumatizing drawings. Hey, it's not any different than when you delete an unflattering picture someone tags you in on Facebook. But while the fan yous are busy fretting over which one of us is Yuzu, spoiler alert, it's not me. 
What I want to know is what were his answers to the fan group essay questions, and how many times did he have to apply before he was finally accepted? While I realize it is highly unlikely that this information will ever come to light, I wish that someday, long after Yuzu retires, which I hope won't be until about the year 2051, we will find out what his super secret social media handle was during his competitive years. Mainly, I think it's hilarious to picture all of us Yuzu content creators going back through every single thing we ever posted, trying to see if Winnie Axel 1207 liked any of them. Speaking of social media, this next segment was created out of my desire to celebrate Yuzu's birthday with the fan Yuz. I wish we could all just gather around a Yuzu themed birthday cake and chat, with Yuzu joining us, of course. This is a virtual version of that dream birthday party. For the past couple weeks, we opened up the FanU social media floor to Ask FanU Fan Me. You submitted questions on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and email, and it was fascinating to see what you wanted to know. Here is my best attempt at answering your questions and pronouncing your Twitter and Instagram handles. Go menasai in advance. We'll start with one of FanU FanMe's top fans, Sharon from Australia. You'll hear from Sharon a few times since she had several questions. Either that, or we have many fans in Australia named Sharon. Sharon asked on Facebook, I cannot listen to Blinding Lights still, nor watch it still. I have to know, am I the only one? Well, Sharon, I actually have the reverse problem. I can't seem to stop watching it. I'll also admit that there are some mornings when Blinding Lights is the only song that can get me out of bed to start the day, and that is simply because the thought of Yuzu's performance makes life a little more worth living. Who am I kidding? A lot more worth living. I'm sure you'll come around to being able to watch it again eventually. Until then, I hope you found something productive to do with that extra 18 minutes of your day you have not dedicated to watching Yonkai 10 Pixels' masterful edit. Hawk Monica asked on Twitter, I very much appreciate your blog. It makes me laugh out loud often. Why, thank you! How many authors are in your team? Here at what I like to call Hanyu HQ, there are several staff positions. We have a blogger, a podcaster, a visual artist, a social media manager, a photographer, a graphic artist, a Redbubble shop manager, and one shared administrative assistant. And all of those positions are held by one person, me. It may be a lot to juggle, but I always get the best parking spot. All jokes aside, I am the sole author of the blog, and the fact that it makes you laugh makes it worth it. I'll share your comment with the rest of the staff in our meeting on Friday morning. It's my turn to bring the donuts. Nitazu asked on Instagram, In some pictures of the practice, Yuzu has a square something at the height of his heart. What could that be? I am certainly not an expert on this, but I have seen this question floating around the fan universe in the past. I believe it is some type of wearable technology that tracks his physical condition, be it a heart rate or respiratory monitor. Apparently, it is not uncommon for athletes, so don't panic. Trust me, I'd be perfectly content if Yuzu also practiced wrapped in bubble wrap. Though I'd like to think it is a tiny box in which he carries all the hopes and dreams of the fan Yuz close to his heart. But we all know that would require a much, much bigger box, and he's got to get airborne. Speaking of boxes, Sharon from Australia asked... Does anybody else have to compartmentalize their Yuzu watching? I cannot watch Worlds 2012 with cute RNJ Yuzu and then next minute watch Blinding Lights. Those two humans are very different. I completely agree, Sharon. To be honest, I very rarely watch any pre-Sochi Yuzu for this very reason. Though I do make the occasional exception for 2012 RNJ because I'll take every minute of that program I can find. It helps if I remind myself that I also would have been significantly younger in 2012 myself, so it's a little less weird. 
a little. But if we're talking way back, Yuzu, I do have to say that there is a special place in my heart for Sing 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 Yuzu. I want a reboot of that costume. I'm pretty sure I need an adult Yuzu skating in suspenders and a striped necktie. With LGC hair, of course. Pam from America asked a couple of the hardest questions. She wants to know what fan you fan me thinks is the funniest yuzu moment and also what is the most heart-wrenching yuzu moment. Much like blinding lights, I have not been able to stop thinking about these questions. It changes depending on my mood, but I'll start with the most heart-wrenching so we can follow it up with happy yuzu thoughts. The first one that pops into my mind is the video of Yuzu from Ross Telecom 2018 when he was getting ready for the medal ceremony and was practicing hopping onto a folding chair using his crutches to make sure he would be able to get on the podium. Gets me every time. Particular even in pain. That's our Yuzu. I'd also have to say every second of his Romeo and Juliet 1.0 skate and continues with wings. I didn't need the jumps, Yuzu. You emoted that at plus five GOE. And then, just to narrow it down, every single photo or video where the angle is such that Yuzu is looking up at the camera. You know, that's probably only about 120,000 times, give or take a photo. But it's just those big, innocent Yuzu eyes. And we better move on, or we'll end up in the same place as Sharon when she thinks about blinding lights. Some of my favorite funny yuzu moments are the incredibly subtle things that make yuzu yuzu. The look on yuzu's face in the interview where Charlie White tells yuzu, You're very capable. Charlie, you use the word capable to describe a copy machine, not the greatest figure skater of all time. Might I add, this was the interview prior to yuzu's Hope and Legacy masterpiece at Worlds 2017. So, thanks for lighting that fire, Charlie. Yuzu's complete transparency of admitting to Nobu that he sometimes puts on his Olympic medals and wears them around the house for no reason. His tortured reaction in his post-Worlds 2019 interview, when he's reminded that he thought his Origin 1.0 costume would have looked best with a gold medal. <laughs> and of course, the ever-popular giggle fest at Shoma trying to get on that stool. <laughs> The way he completely unravels in that moment just sends me every single time. But ask me tomorrow and I'll have a totally new list. I'm sure the moment this podcast is recorded, I'll remember other favorites. Sharon from Australia wonders if Yuzu feels like a rock star when he struts down the concourse on the way to perform in a competition and then hears thousands of cheers as he enters the venue. I love this question because it reminds me of more favorite Yuzu moments. One, the interview where he claims he has bad posture. Yuzu. If someone with bad posture tried to walk down those concourses in ice skates, they would end up flat on their faces, much less look like they should be on a runway in Milan. The other moment is very near to my heart. I was in the audience at the 2019 Autumn Classic when Yuzu took off his jacket and revealed his Origin 2.0 costume. I wear this as a fan you badge of honor. My most distinct memory from that reveal was the way Yuzu played it cool, despite obviously being aware of how the fan Yus were completely losing it. Each time he skated by, there was an eruption of uncontrollable squealing. The other fan Yus around me were cheering too. But it was the way he skated by. So nonchalant, but making sure his warm-up was perfectly executed so that we saw the front of the costume, and then the side, and then the back. Yes, Yuzu, 
We liked it. So yes, I think he feels like a rock star. Just keep taking that jacket off, Yuzu. We'll always be there for it. Speaking of costumes, we had several people inquire about what Fan You Fan Me thinks happens to Yuzu's costumes, medals, souvenirs, framed pieces of paper declaring him the owner of Japan, etc. Oh, I suddenly remembered another favorite Yuzu funny moment. See, I warned you this would happen. It was during the 2020 ISU Awards when he said in English to the hosts, Um, let me correct you. Gold, Yuzu. You can wear that moment with your Origin 1.0 costume anytime. But back to Yuzu's storage unit. I've actually wondered this myself. I imagine in much the same way we store things based on their value to us, Yuzu stores his costumes and memorabilia. Same A, especially the Pyeongchang version, Nota Stellata and Haru Yokoi are carefully stored in a place of honor, probably somewhere near his earphone collection. But while the Origin 2.0 costume is out touring the world, sans Hanyu-san, I worry about where the Wings of Words infamous Butterwings costume has ended up. Is it in a box in the garage with the original trash bag pants from his early exhibition days? And is there one box that is simply labeled Yuzu's Team Jackets with Japan written on the butt? And if Yuzu sometimes just wears his gold medals around the house, might we hope he sometimes does the same with the purple pants of sin? Or <gasps> masquerade? I'd like to imagine him sitting on the floor playing a video game while wearing his etude in D-sharp minor costume from 2011-2012 because Dang, that costume did something different for me on 2018 Yuzu. But I bet the blue velvet glove would throw off his gaming. And I wonder at what point his mom gave up on keeping a scrapbook. Scrapbooking is hard enough to keep up with when you aren't a global icon. Hmm. I suddenly feel compelled to ship a box of double stick tape to Ice Rink Sendai. Attention, Yuzuru no Okazan. Sitlin Bik Mutfagi asked on Instagram. He went to many countries for the competitions. If he wanted to go on vacation, which country or city would it be? My first thought was that he would want to visit an earphone museum. But upon Googling that, I discovered there doesn't really appear to be one. And thus, we now know Yuzu's next career goal once he retires from figure skating. He could probably just start selling tickets to give tours of his collection. Though I'm sure it wouldn't be only earphone aficionados buying those tickets. Turns out earphones were invented in 1910 in a kitchen in Utah, by the way. Not real high on the sightseeing list. There is, however, a Winnie the Pooh Museum in Sussex. And the more I looked at their website, the more convinced I am that Yuzu must go there. You can take a walk through the Hundred Acre Wood, visit the Poozium and gift shop, don't panic, Poozon, and there's a tea room where you can get toast shaped like your favorite bear along with a pot of honey or jam. They even have five different kinds of hot chocolate. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to think of Yuzu and Pusan sharing bear-shaped toast and a pot of honey in a cottage next to the Hundred Acre Wood? But these are just my suggestions for where I think Yuzu would like to vacation. To find out for sure, I'll have to ask him over dinner tonight. Winnie Axel 1207 from Sendai asked via email, Which anime theme song would the fan news most like to see me skate to? Uh... Which fan you is this again? And we're out of time for this special Yuzu birthday episode of the Fan You Fan Me podcast. But Yuzu, I mean Winnie Axel 1207, the answer is Catharsis from Tokyo Ghoul. I hope you enjoyed the virtual birthday party, and I hope you found some real cake with strawberries or bear shaped toast to celebrate Yuzu's day. Thank you to everyone who sent in questions, and feel free to keep them coming. If there are enough, we'll have a chat around some virtual gyoza for another episode. Until next time, say it with me. Happy birthday to you, Yuzuru Hanyu. Thank you for existing.
The Fan You Fan Me podcast is a Back to the Forest production. Back to the forest? <laughs> um, you know, just kidding. <laughs>